I'm just gonna warm up my legs. I'm not going for a lot of weight. I'm gonna only do five, uh, eight reps. I lost count, so I think that's six, seven. When you get out of the gym and you do legs, you could be a little bit wobbly. <laughs> Go lightly and work your way up. You got nothing to prove. You know, I remember just a few years ago, I call it the Casey Neistat era, where everybody was vlogging. Everybody was trying to be like Casey. Everybody was trying to do daily vlogs and daily videos. And it was a good time because people were creating and people were trying to do something different. Even though a lot of people were copycats, I think it did put a different spin on video. Now things are a lot different. You have a lot more tech channels. You have a lot more camera channels. You have a lot more people just sitting stationary in one spot and talking. And I think it can be good in some places, but I'm asking myself, is vlogging dead? The Sony ZV-E10 was advertised as a vlogging camera which means it was created to vlog with. But to be honest with you, I haven't even used this camera to vlog much. If anything, I've just used it like this, sitting still, sitting at my desk and talking to you guys. And I started to ask myself, well, why is that? So I did a poll not too long ago and I found that a lot of people are just not inspired to create and they're not inspired to do anything with their cameras. But the crazy thing is camera sales are at an all time high. So I'm like, wait a minute, this doesn't make sense. How is it that we're selling all these cameras, but so many people are not in the mindset or don't feel inspired to create? And the only thing that makes sense is we're just buying gear to have it. We don't really have a use for it. And that's pretty much it. One of the things I've been asking myself a lot lately is what am I doing on this channel? Like, What am I talking about? Am I bringing value to people through just talking about gear and how to be better at your camera? Or are people actually getting inspired through the stuff on here? And I think it's kind of a mixed bag. But I started to ask myself, well, why is that? What may cause some people to be uninspired is gear reviews. So let's say one of your favorite creators reviews a lens. He tests it. It looks great. So you buy it. You get it home. You open it up. You put it on your camera and it looks nothing like what he had. You just can't get the same quality out of that lens that he got. And that makes you discouraged and you stop messing with your camera and you just put it down. And then before you know it, you have all these pieces of gear that you bought and none of them mean anything to you because it, they just didn't work out for some reason. And I think this is one of the biggest problems that I'm seeing with creatives as a whole. We have this consumer mindset to where we want the best but we're being told that having the best is all we need we just need the best gear if you have the best gear then everything else is going to be built on that when the actual inverse of that is true meaning you have to have substance you have to have something to talk about and you have to be inspired first once you're inspired first then you can get the gear that helps you move along and fuels you in your inspiration. But the gear can't be your inspiration. You have to have that intrinsically and inside before you get any piece of gear. That's why I stress stuff like this kit lens that I'm shooting on here. It doesn't matter the quality and the pixels and the chromatic aberration. None of that matters. What matters is do you have something of value to talk about? Can you give something to someone else that's going to enhance them, teach them, 
uplift them. If you don't have that, it doesn't matter what lens you have. And I think this is part of the problem. The other thing is sometimes I believe gear can get in the way of things. But here's a scenario. Let's say you don't have a wireless microphone and you only have the mic on your camera. If that's the case, then you may find yourself having to stay right next to your camera in order to get your shots and have audio in the shot. And after a while, you may get bored of doing that because you can't get creative with your shots while you're moving around and talking. But if you had a lav mic, then that will solve that problem. And that's what the Seven Rhymes DW10 allows you to do, is you can move around and you can have the mic on your camera and you can have it on your phone or whatever it is that you use to record on. And that can actually help you to stay in a creative spot because you're not worried about limitations. But you have to be careful when you talk about limitations because sometimes you can think you have limitations that aren't actually limitations. So it can get very complex very quickly. So what makes this microphone different than any of the other mics out there, like the DJI and all these other ones that seem to be very popular? Well, what makes this one different is the cost. It doesn't cost a lot of money and it's something that you can get and it's not gonna get in the way of your creativity. It's very lightweight and you can really pretty much do what you want. It's actually so light that I forget it's on my shirt. It doesn't hang down on my shirt and it doesn't cause a lot of problems. It comes with a windscreen or a dead cat. Uh, it also comes with noise cancellation, AI cancellation. We're gonna test it now to see what it sounds like, but it also has a reverb effect. So let's see what that sounds like. Okay, so this is the active noise canceling and let's just see if it's canceling out the noise around me. There are birds and all kinds of stuff that are around me. So let's see if we hear that. I'm gonna be quiet for a second. All right, and now we're gonna turn active noise cancellation off and see the difference with it on and off. I actually love the sound of nature around me. Now, typically when it comes to noise cancellation, I'm a person where I just like to have the natural environment around me and I don't like to have it just be my voice because it just seems unnatural. So we're gonna see if this sounds good and what you guys think about it. The other effect that's on here is reverb. Now, you may wanna use this for like speaking or public speaking or something like that and to make it sound like you're in a bigger place, but it's gonna sound weird out here, but let's just see. Let's just see what it sounds like. So everything sounds bigger because it's all reverb. Now I'm not in a big room, I'm just actually outside. So my voice really wouldn't sound anything like this if I were outside. But I guess if you were in a situation where you were in a big auditorium and you wanted that effect, well, you have it. So now we're back to regular mode and to be honest with you, I think this microphone sounds pretty good for what it is. I'm not doing anything with the audio, if anything, just boosting it up so that it fits in the track better with the music underneath. But uh, this is a really good mic. I'm not gonna say it's the best one out there. There are some that may have better quality. There are some that you may not have to EQ. Hey, but again, when we talk about being inspired to create you want something that's not gonna get in the way and you want something that's not going to cause you to think about it. Cause those things make it difficult. Why am I talking about inspiration and talking about a microphone at the same time? Well, there's a popular saying that says gear does matter. And it's true, gear does matter when it comes to creating because you do need gear. You need a camera, you need a lens. And one of the most important things is you need a microphone. Without that, no one can hear what you're saying. Unless you're just doing mimes and things like that, you're going to need a microphone. So that's why I'm talking about a microphone. But don't mistake this to mean that 
gear is everything. No, gear matters because you need it in order to get what's inside out. But without having what's inside, then gear doesn't matter. What am I trying to say? What I'm trying to say in a nutshell is having the right gear, having the right perspective about gear and familiarizing yourself with gear will help gear not to get in the way of inspiration. See, gear should never stop you from being inspired. And when it does stop you from being inspired, then that means that the gear is now a problem and you should never be in that situation. So I think getting gear that is simple to use, that's easy to understand, and that's gonna give you right out of the box good results. If you are not a technical person, then those are the type pieces of gear that you should aim towards. And this is why I push things like cell phones and kit lenses, because these things are just basic in their very form and they allow you to get out what it is that you have inside. I'm just gonna start with the case here. So you get this little nice case here. Uh, it has a zipper on it. It's got the logo on the front. This is some type of plastic material, um, but it has this fabric on top. Uh, nice little lanyard with the zipper. So I'm gonna just show you what it looks like inside. So uh, this is where the actual mic is. So in here is where you'll have the mic case. And then you have this little flap here. And under this flap is where all the accessories go. Now I've taken them out just to make it easier to show you. But this is a nice little pocket to put all of your little accessories. You could even put batteries and stuff like that in here if you want it. But I'm gonna just show you what that looks like up close. So you get this little pouch here. Inside of here is where you can put uh, your stuff. I like that they included this here because this kind of keeps everything separate. So uh, all these little accessories that go in here, if you put them in there, uh, you don't have to worry about them kind of like when you open a the case, they're not going to fall out and you just see them everywhere. So this is nice to have. But then moving on to the actual microphone and the microphone case itself. If you know anything about AirPods and if you've seen any other micro other microphones that are on the market, they're pretty much the same where you get this little case here. And this is a case that charges the actual transmitters and receiver and, and it charges via USB-C here. So once you charge this case up, then there's some lights on the front that will actually tell you uh, how good the charge is or how much charge you have left. I'm gonna do it again so you can see it. So these light up blue here. I'm not sure how good you can see that with the light, um, but this is good to know just so you know how much charge your case has. So when you open up the case here, you'll see these are the two transmitters and this is the receiver. Now, what I like about these again is it has the little indicator lights to let you know that they're charged. And then when you pull them out, what they do is they automatically connect to the receiver here. But I'm just gonna start with the uh, receiver first. So with the receiver, one of the things that I like about it first is how small it is. If you look at it in my hand here, it's not heavy at all. It's it's really small. And this is the part that's gonna clip onto your camera. Uh, this can go right onto your cold shoe mount here. It has this little uh, cold shoe adapter. And the thing that I like about this is it has rubber uh, underneath here. So this rubber will help it grip onto whatever uh, you're gonna connect this to. In addition, you have these little contacts here. This is where it charges. All right, so looking at the side of this, you have your USB charging here. So you can charge this separately from the case if you want it to, but then you can also use this to plug directly like into your computer and you can send the mic signal directly into your computer from here, but this is also for charging. Then here is your power button, your mono and your stereo switch. So once you press this, you'll notice that the light on the front changes from green to blue. Now when it's in blue, it's in mono mode, which means that if you're using one of these mics, the left and the right channel of your audio source is going to be filled with the one microphone. Now when it's on green, this means that it's in stereo mode. So stereo mode means one of these is gonna be on the left side and then the other will be on the right side. So um, just so you know, you have that as an option. And then lastly, you have this Bluetooth pairing button here, which you can use to pair this to the receiver, but it comes already, or at least this one came paired already. This is one of my favorite parts about this whole thing. You can adjust the gain volume here. So this allows you to adjust how loud uh, your gain is gonna be uh, picking up these 
uh, transmitters here. So it's pretty basic, pretty straightforward. There's nothing really fancy about this. And you have the output here. So you can also plug a pair of headphones in here and monitor, or this can go directly out to your camera. Now, what you'll use is this cable here. Now, the thing with this cable is this is a TRRS cable. You could tell by these lines here, this is tip ring ring sleeve. And basically what this means is if you plug this into a regular three and a half jack, uh, it may not work unless you have certain settings on your camera. So what you're gonna wanna do if you run into that is you're gonna wanna buy one of these cables here. This is a regular cable, a stereo cable. So this here is really what most people are gonna use. I'm not sure why they didn't include this, but um, if I can find a link to one of these cables, I will put it in the description below. But this came with another Seven Rhymes microphone that I have. So this is something you're gonna wanna have. If you have an iPhone, uh, with a lightning cable, then you're gonna wanna use this. So the way this works is this is gonna go into your iPhone, and then this in here um, is gonna be your headphone jack, and this will go into here, and then the other side will go into this receiver here, and that's the way that will work. So just so you know, that's how that works. Now, they also include this cable too, this is a USB-C to USB-C cable, but it also has the three and a half jack on the end here. So if you have an iPhone, this can plug directly into your iPhone. And then again, this part of the cable will go into uh, here, and then the other side will go into your microphone receiver. So that's how that works. Now moving on to the transmitter here. This is really tiny, as you can see. It's really small, and I love this uh, for being this way. Uh, cause it's really lightweight. These are your different modes. So you have your dry, you have your active noise cancellation, then you have your reverb. And then on the side here, you have some buttons. This turns it on and off. This is your mute switch. And this, this button here changes your modes here. So when the microphone is muted, you'll see the light turns red here and blue when it's active. So the thing that I like about this setup is it's very simple to use. So you're not going to be doing a lot of fumbling and you're not going to have to worry about doing, having a lot of settings. You literally just throw it on, open up the case, plug in your uh, receiver here and you're good to go. Now, one last thing I will say about this here. Now, some people I saw one reviewer say that he accidentally pressed the button on the side here that actually put it into reverb mode. And I guess he did some recordings and he was getting reverb through his audio and that's not what he wanted. I haven't had that problem, but uh, you do wanna be careful that you don't uh, press that button. For $87, I mean, you really can't beat this. You can't complain. Uh, this is really good sound quality. What you heard was no EQ, it was straight out of the microphone. I may have just turned the levels up a little bit, but other than that, I'll say these are good. Now, you do wanna be careful with these. Uh, if you put them close, if you have them too close to your mouth, they're not gonna sound as good as if you leave them a little bit away from you because uh, of the way the processing is inside a microphone. But let me know if this is something that you guys would be interested in, um, but I'm gonna put the link below. If you have any questions, feel free to put it in the comment section below. But anyway, until next time, I'll holla at y'all later. I'm out, peace.